if I can get your comment, maybe you have ideas, because it does seem that this kind of attack um, works, of being called a racist, being called um, not, maybe not sexist, but somebody, you know, like we're going through a Johnny Depp trial now, right? Uh, it's a defamation trial, and the reason it's a defamation trial is because all, all it took is a single accusation of Johnny Depp being somebody who sexually and physically abused uh, Amber Heard. And all it took is just a single article. Uh, no proof was given um, except the accusation itself. And the world believed it. So it's effective. So how do you fight back if it's so damn effective that you can just call anybody racist and it works? It's hard to wash off. <laughs> it's it's uh, uh, you're, you know, you're not proven in the court of law or anything like that, but we we get those articles, we get that label, and then the world moves on and just assumes that person is racist. So what, how, how do you, do you have any ideas how to fight back? No, I don't, frankly. <laughs> Um, just highlighting listen, Roseanne the Barr, who yes. made this statement about Valerie Jarrett, she made some kind of ape like reference to yes. the whatever, and her show got canceled, and, and, and she's a racist. So, first of all, pointing it out, I suppose, is one of the most powerful things that this, the, uh, the hypocrisy of it, the uh, you say it works. I, I guess you're right. It used to be that calling someone a communist, yeah, worked. I mean, going back. To the late 40s, early 50s, Red Scare, uh, McCarthyism, and whatnot. And uh, the person might have belonged to a club that was pro Soviet Union in the 1930s when they were in college. They might have voted for the socialist candidate Henry Wallace in the presidential election of 1948. They might belong to the Communist Party. They, they, they might think Karl Marx was uh, right about a whole lot of stuff about capitalism and whatnot. And they got called a communist or a Marxist, and it could have ruined their career, could have ruined their lives, um, you know. And a lot of people shut up about it, and it took, and it went on for a long time. Uh, and in a way, in, in a way, it kind of still is going on. I mean, you call somebody a Marxist, and if, if you can make that stick, they're certainly not going to get elected president of the United States. But I don't know about this. Um, I think, you know. I once read this book by um, a German uh, political scientist called Elizabeth Neula Neumann. That was uh, uh, the writer's name, Elizabeth Neula Neumann. The book was called The Spiral of Silence. Mm -hmm. And the argument was, there can be some views, some issues in society that get uh, defined in such a way that it's inappropriate to hold those views. And as a result, people who don't want to be shamed, who don't want to be ostracized, don't express those views. And when they don't express them, anybody holding the view, because they don't hear it said by others, think that they're the only one or one of the few who hold the view. And so they don't want to be the only one out there saying something, so they keep it to themselves. So now this view, this attitude in society could be held by a large number of people but because of the fear that if they were to express it, they'd be ostracized, no one says it. And since no one is saying it, the others who hold the view don't know that they're not alone, that they are not the only ones who hold the view, uh, and hence they keep silent. That could be an equilibrium. It could be a relatively stable situation in which the emperor has no clothes. Everybody can see that this dude is naked, okay? But everybody thinks that, you know, I don't want to be the only one to say it. And so we all kind of collaborate in this charade of keeping the view to ourselves. Then along comes uh, an event that uh, somebody decides to defy the consensus and to speak out. It could be a little kid who, in the story about the emperor has no clothes, doesn't realize that he's not supposed to say that the emperor is naked. The thing about the kid in the story who says that the emperor is naked is not that he's saying it. It's not even that other people hear him saying it. 
It's that everybody knows that everybody else heard him say it. Mm -hmm. Okay? The kid who speaks out and says the emperor has no clothes creates a circumstance in which it's common knowledge that the emperor has no clothes. Now, common knowledge does not just mean knowledge. It does not even mean widespread knowledge. It means comprehensive knowledge of other person's knowledge of the thing. Okay? So the spiral of silence is an equilibrium that is susceptible to being undermined by a process of, of a kind of cumulative process, a snowballing process of revelation that you're not the only one who thinks this way. Okay? It's fascinating to think that there's an ocean of common knowledge that we're waiting for the little kid to wake us up to, different little parts of it. That's correct. And the little kid, by the way, could be somebody like Donald Trump, only more effective than Donald Trump. Somebody who is smarter than Donald Trump. Somebody who is shrewder than Donald Trump. S somebody who figures out that when Colin Kaepernick takes a knee at a football game and says, I'm not going to stand for this Pledge of Allegiance, that a vast number of people are uh, very unhappy about that. Somebody who understands that when a Black Lives Matter activist stands up with his ball fist and says, burn this bitch down about a city in the United States of America, that a lot of people are upset about that, a lot of them. A person, a shrewd politician, a, a shrewd uh, manager of a uh, public image could build on and create a circumstance in which more and more people will feel safe to express that view. And the more who express it, the safer those who have yet to express it, but who hold it, will feel in expressing it. And to the extent that the view is very widespread, but is kept under wraps, an explosion could happen. And you can look up at tomorrow and have a very different country than you had yes. today, because the conspiracy of silence, the spiral of silence, ends up getting um, unraveled uh, by somebody who steps out away from the consensus, dares to take the slings and arrows of exposing themselves as a naysayer, but taps into a sentiment that's uh, that's very widespread. And I fear that with respect to uh, many racial issues, this is uh, the situation that we actually confront, that the, it could unravel in a very ugly way. 